So here's a story about Rabbi Levi Yitzchak of Bradichev. Once there was a miser, a very stingy person, or at least everybody said he was very stingy, <clears throat> that lived in the town of Bradichev. Bradichev is a town in the Ukraine, somewhere, I think. And, and that's the, the head of the, 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 the rabbi, there was Rabbi Levi Yitzchak. And one, there was a person that everybody called, considered him to be a big miser, and he didn't give charity when people knocked on his door. And when he passed away, so Rabbi Levi Yitzhak Rabbitichev said that they should give him a very honorable burial and everyone should come. So the rabbi said, so everybody came, even though everybody personally did not like this person. He wasn't a very pleasant person at all. And he was also known as a very rich person, but a big miser. So Rabbi Levi Yitzhak Rabbitichev said, <clears throat> Um, so after the funeral, so people came up to him and said, you know, the, the rabbi, we did what you said, and we gave him honor, etc. But can you please explain to me? I mean, you know, you know how much of a miser this man was and how he aggravated everybody. Why did he get such special uh, treatment? He says, well, because of three court cases that he was involved in that came in front of me. He was sued by three people. And because of that, I'm giving him the special, because he was sued. A person that gets sued, you know, he means he did wrong to somebody. And that's the reason why we have to treat him so specially. And so he says, yeah, so I'll tell you what the what, what, what were the cases. So the first case is that there came to, uh, came to me a man, <clears throat> and he was, um, let's see what I did, this was right. Oh, yeah. A man brought him in front of me and he was yelling and screaming that this man I want to, <clears throat> he, he, he tricked me, he tricked me, the rich man, he tricked me. I wanted to say, what, what happened? He said, well, the, 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 the how do you say, the plaintiff, the plaintiff said, <clears throat> um, okay, I have to admit something. I left my wife. I abandoned my wife. And I told my wife when I abandoned her, that I have the, the rich man, this the, the defendant, this guy who just died, the, the, the defendant, but well, of course then he was alive. The, the defendant, he owes me a lot of money and that he promised that he'll take care of you every week. And you just have to go to him every Sunday and he'll give you enough money for the whole coming week and Shabbat also. And here's money for the first week. He gives his wife enough money for the first week. And, you know, I'll be back soon. And I left. I left. I abandoned my wife. Okay, I made it. I did a bad thing, terrible thing. <clears throat> and then after a while, so I got into a business deal and I succeeded. And I, I things were really going good. And I decided that's it. I'm going back home. So I was away from home like for two years. So as I'm coming back home, I'm thinking to myself, listen, maybe I shouldn't come back home because, you know, I did this terrible thing to my wife. Because, in fact, this man did not owe me anything. He didn't owe me anything. And um, <clears throat> so, okay, I'll go back. I'll make it good. I hope my wife is still alive. You know, the community probably took care of her. So he goes back and his wife is so happy to see him. Oh, I'm so happy to see you. Where have you been? But we're so worried about you. So I was very... He said, uh, how, how have things been going? He said, oh, wonderful, wonderful. He said, you had enough money? He said, oh, yeah, just like you said, the, the rich man, he gave me every week. I said, what? He said, yeah, yeah, he gave me every week. You forgot. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. that's right, right, right. I, I, I forgot. So I went to the rich man, this guy, and I said, what, what happened? He said, oh, you, you came back, huh? He said, uh, well, your wife came to me, you know, after a week, and she said she wants the money that I owe to her husband. And I wanted to say to her, who's your husband? You know, what are you talking about? I don't know anybody, money. That's what I wanted to say. But all of a sudden, I understood what was going on. And I said, who is your husband? She said, husband such and such. I said, oh, yes, 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 true, true. That's right. Uh, uh, remind me, what, what is it? How much money? She said, I don't know. You just, he, she just said, come every Sunday and you'll give me money for the whole week. So I said, oh, yes, yes, that's right. Sure, of course, of course, of course. Mr. Grace and right here, Mrs. Wife. <laughs> of course, I come every week. And that's what it was. She came every Sunday and I gave her money for the whole rest of the week. 
And that's what's keeping her going. And you should be ashamed of yourself that you left my wife. Said, okay, I'm ashamed of myself. I admit it. But here I want you to take, I want to repay you. I have a lot of money. I'm a rich man now. And the, the rich man said, I refuse. I'm not going to take the money back. He says, you want to give the money, give it to charity. Give it to someone else. So you did a bad thing. You left your wife. Giving me back the money is not going to fix things up. You have to do what you wanted to do to your wife, that she should be poor, she should wander around. Other people that really are poor and that they wander around, you alleviate their poverty. You give charity to poor people. You don't have to give it back to me. So I said, I said, I didn't want to do it. I want to pay him back for them. So that's why we're, we had the court case. <clears throat> so I said that the, the rich man, right? The, 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 this Mr. Groys that just died that everybody hates him. I said, he's right. He doesn't have to pay you back. He doesn't have to accept the money. He doesn't have to accept the money if he doesn't want to. That's the first case. Second case was <clears throat> almost the same thing. A man came and he was yelling and screaming. <clears throat> Why is this man stubborn? I, I said, what happened? He said <clears throat> that um, some fellow, I was in a market place. Oh, I know what it is. He said, I was in a market. And um, I, uh, oh, that's, I mark it. And uh, I saw somebody had a big bag of money and he kept it in his pocket. He said, I happened to be an expert pickpocket. That was back then. And I picked this guy's pocket. I took all of his money. <clears throat> and uh, that's it. I was very happy. I looked and I saw there was like $50,000 in there, whatever. I was very happy. All of a sudden, I was, a tremendous scream came out. My money, where's my money? This money I borrowed money. People gave me money. People loaned me. They trusted me. Where's my money? Ah, screaming and yelling and yelling and screaming. And people gathered around. Where's my money? And the guy fainted. He passed out. And they tried to bring him money. What did it look like? The money was in a pouch. I don't know. He probably threw it. Ah, screaming and yelling. <clears throat> so I was standing there. And uh, suddenly somebody came and come from the crowd and said, one second, how much money was it? Said fifty thousand. Says I found the money. I found the money. So I thought, what do you mean that I found the money? I have the money in my pocket. I stole the money. Says here's the money. I, <clears throat> I found it. <clears throat> was it in bills or was it in coins? Says the it was in bills. I said yeah yeah here it is. I found it. It was all scattered around, but I found all the money. I didn't know. I you know it was just I was going to announce it. Oh thank you even. So I started to think, you know, who is this guy that gave back the money? What is this? And not only that, this person who gave the money back, he was willing to lose money. And me, I'm willing to steal money. He's exactly the opposite of me. You know, this person, he gave the money back. He's like a superhuman being. A regular human being doesn't steal. A subhuman being, he steals. That's me. And this guy is a superhuman being. He gave the money back. So I found out who it was. Who was it? This guy whose name is Grois. So I went over to him and I had the pouch of money. And I said, listen, I'm the thief. I want to give you the back the money. You gave the money to him. I said, no, no, I did a commandment. I did a mitzvah. This guy was poor. <clears throat> he lost his money. I didn't want it to, to, I saw he couldn't take it. He was passing out. He was going crazy. So I gave him the money. That's it. I said, I've got money on my own. I don't, you want to give money? says, give that money to charity and give also twice as much from your own pocket, give to charity. So I said, I don't want to do it. I want to give it. So I, I brought him, they brought the came case in front of me. The thief said he wants to give back the money to the rich guy. The rich guy said, he doesn't want to have it. So again, I said, the rich guy, you don't have to accept it. Except that's the second case. The third case was, oh, <clears throat> One fellow borrowed money from another fellow. <laughs> he borrowed money from another fellow. And let's see how this goes, how this goes. He borrowed money. Oh, he borrowed money from Mr. Groys. That's what it was. He borrowed money from this Mr. Groys. He borrowed, let's say, $100,000. He borrowed money from him. And he, he ran away. He ran away. He left. He was supposed to come back. He didn't come back. Meanwhile, Mr. Groys made a couple of really good business deals and he made twice that much money is what he lent. After a year, the person, the thief, that he was going to borrow the money and not come back, 
he had regret and he came back to give the money back. And he said, I want to give you the money back that I borrowed. And I said, uh, uh, Mr. Croy said, after two years, you said you were going to give back to me a month. He said, okay, I know I was bad. I had bad intentions. I was uh, just, I got into trouble. Listen, I'm telling you the truth. I wanted to steal the money. And I, now I don't want to steal the money. I'm giving the money back to you. So Mr. Croy said, you already gave it back to me. I gave it back to you. How did I give it back? So because as soon as you made, we made this deal, after one week, I saw you didn't come back. And suddenly I made a business deal and I made 200,000. I made 200,000. I realized that God gave me back the money, so I don't want to take the money. So the, <clears throat> the, the, the potential thief brought this Mr. Grace to me and he wanted to, me to command him that he has to take the money back. It's stolen money. And Mr. Grace said, you want to give the money to the charity, you know, and you should also take it from your pocket and give money to the charity <clears throat> instead of just giving stolen money to charity. And I said, Mr. Grace is right. He doesn't have to this. So that's the reason why I said you should give him honor and give him a proper burial. And it also comes to teach us not to judge people from face value. <clears throat> that we have no idea what people's good deeds are or what challenges that people are overcoming <clears throat> in life. Therefore, we have to judge everyone positively and treat everyone as positively as possible. Have a good day with Mashiach now. God willing, see you on Sunday. Now, I, I wanted to tell you one second. You, let, me, let me turn this off. Let me turn this off. No, maybe I shouldn't. I am every uh, year before Shvuot, so I go around to children's schools and I play guitar and they gather these little kids from, this, from the <coughs> kindergartens and first grade, little kids. One second. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> okay, so some like this. Sunday, Sunday, class will end at nine. Class will it'll be from eight fifteen until nine o'clock. That's what the class is going to be. <clears throat> so Sunday. And this coming Sunday, yes. And we'll see Only Sunday afterwards. Okay. I don't know, but anyway, because right before Shavuot, the Rebbe said you should gather children. And I've been doing this with God's help. I had a Chabad house in, in a city called Or Yehuda. And I was very successful with the children. With the older people, I wasn't so successful. With children, amazingly so. And they used to fill up the synagogues. They used to run from synagogue to synagogue. They used to fill the place up with these little kids. Kids that are like <clears throat> five years old, you know, four years old. They took them from, you know, Pre, pre kindergarten kids. <clears throat> and I would come there with a, uh, a, a small amplifier and a guitar, and the kids would be hypnotized. I, it, was just, it was just amazing. I have pictures somewhere of it. Hypnotized, amazing. And the kids would scream out the sentences, and you know, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, and I would cry, and I would sing songs for them. I'm Yisrael. I, uh, this, amazing. So, I got, with God's help, I've been doing that every year since then. And I'm going to do that also this Sunday. So classes this Sunday, this, the morning class, will end at 9 o'clock. Have a good Shabbos with Mashiach now, and see you all uh -huh. on Sunday, 8.15. So this Sunday, possibly Monday, right? Yeah, I don't know. I'll tell you on Sunday what's going to be. But the, the class okay. will start at the proper time, just at 9 o'clock. Okay. And don't expect there to be another class, because there probably will not be. Well, we'll miss you, but have a good